The Unshackled Waves, episode 123. Broadcasting from Melbourne, Australia, this is The Unshackled Waves with Tim Wills. Brought to you by theunshackled.net. Hello everyone, great to have your company. Well, in the two weeks leading up to Australia Day 2018, we saw an unprecedented number of attacks on uh, not just the day, but Australia itself. Despite this, when it came to Australia Day, most ordinary Australians celebrated the day, uh, what is good about the nation, with family and friends over a barbecue. There was no violence or riots, and the day was pretty successful. Uh, We had a fantastic Australian of the Year announced in quantum physicist Michelle Simmons, who has firmly steered clear of the social engineering agenda of the previous winners and instead was a unifying and deserving recipient. The Unshackled was there to cover Australia Day in Melbourne. Both myself and Associate Editor Tom Peroni began our day at Moreland City Council, where Patriot activist Neil Erickson and his group Patriot Blue handed out information on being Australian to those participating in citizenship ceremonies. Then we visited Melbourne CBD and observed both the Australia Day Parade and the conclusion of the Invasion Day Rally. Both were quite eye-opening in regard to uh, what they displayed. And we finished our day at the True Blue Crew uh, beach party in St Kilda, uh, which was in the end just a simple celebration of Australia and everyone had a lot of fun. To discuss what turned out to be a pleasant Australia Day, I invited on the show Logan Spaulding, who was one of the members of Patriot Blue we met on the day. He has been involved in a number of Patriot Blue's events, most notably the Sam Dastiari confrontation, as well as discussing the events of the day. We'll also ask him about the controversial nature of some of Patriot Blue's activism. Logan, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me on the show. Now, I've titled this show uh, Australia Day Save because I believe that it it was saved yeah. because it was predicted by, uh, you know, Victoria Police and the media, especially in Melbourne, to, uh, you know, be a day of, you know, tension and even uh, riots. But but it turned out to be, on the, on the whole, you know, most people got on and, you know, celebrated Australia Day and all the, the left could muster was their uh, Invasion Day protests in the, in the, in the major cities. Now, uh, you were uh, yeah. he- heavily involved in uh, saving Australia Day day uh, on the on the ground uh you were with uh, neil erickson and patriot blue at uh moreland city council now why did you decide to uh go along and because you were there to hand out uh, information to uh new australian citizens because of course moreland was one of the three inner melbourne councils that decided to remove all references to australia day i went along because i wanted to save our day save the day that families get together and enjoy culture in Australia, um, where everyone from all nationalities can get together and celebrate the wonderful land they live in. <coughs> now, as an Aboriginal, I have no issue with the date it's on. Nothing happened on this day. It's the date we landed. No, like, we didn't start. No, nothing happened at all. And I'm actually very, very thankful for the British to come out and give us all that we've received because we weren't progressing very far at the start and post um, British colonization we managed to progress a lot faster And the flyer that was handed out uh, uh, to new citizens, it basically just contained, uh, you know, information about, you know, what it is to be an Australian, about, you know, uh, Australian values. You, uh, it was handed out by a gentleman, uh, George, uh, I recall, uh, was his name. Yes, yes, George. Um, he was dressed with his Serbian hat and he is the son of an immigrant. And he loves his country, and he knows that when you roam, you do as the Romans do. And he has extreme pride for where he lives. And that is admirable, because you don't find it very often these days. There seems that people that are in love with their country are a small minority now, because of um, what what all these historians have said and um, what the education system's taught us, what the media's given us, all this crap that they keep shoving into our faces. And a lot of people buy it, but the smart few don't, and they know that there's something up with it. 
Uh, and also the flyer contained uh, information about uh, uh, as councils like Moreland are referring to them as uh, communist uh, un-Australian uh, councils. Now, they weren't stripped of their uh, sit uh, power to hold uh, citizenship ceremonies on Australia Day. Uh, the other two councils uh, who uh, basically cancelled Australia Day, uh, Darabin and Yarra, they were st uh, stripped of their power. But it was interesting that uh, despite, you know, Moreland's, uh, <laughs> what should we say, distaste for Australia Day, there still seemed to be a lot of... <laughs> people ent entering the building <laughs> putting to, it nicely <laughs> to to have uh citizenship ceremonies i mean you, uh, a lot of the the flyers were handed out and taken by um you know people going in for citizenship ceremonies yeah well um t we weren't we weren't actually allowed in we were basically told we cannot come in because i don't know it was an invite only session but there was no one checking invitations at the door so we, we, we stood outside, we handed out these flyers, and we welcomed the new Australians. And we basically said, hey, here's our, here's our culture, here's what we want you to respect, enjoy your time in Australia. And that was it. That's all it was. And we shook hands with the new Australians. We done everything, we were very nice to them. The left were the ones that were kind of giving them the cold shoulder, a bit like, oh, yeah, we do this every year, the kind of thing. And it's like they're not treating them like human, they're treating them like cattle. And it's pretty sad to see that the people that are meant to be there for them are the ones that aren't there for them at all. And obviously, uh, Neil Erickson, he, you know, has a, a reputation for, you know, causing, you know, drama and being uh, quite, uh, quite provocative. And uh, as a result, the, the police were uh, <laughs> yeah. there, in, there, there in numbers. Uh, there was, you know, it's always feared that, you know, the, the left might come and, you know, cause a disruption. But, um, you know, because they, they are mm. such a you know, small minority of people, they were, you know, busy preparing for their you know, Invasion Day Parade in the city, and they, 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 they can't seem to be there yeah. at, two, at two places at once. Well, they really don't want to leave their safe space. That's basically um, how I'd assume it to be. They're all standing there going, all right, guys, get ready. We're about to leave the safe space. I don't want to go, kind of thing, you know, and because, well, obviously the Centrelink doesn't pay the, them enough to put in their mic to get all the way out to Moreland. They're about as far as they can get is the CBD. But... Um, yeah, the, but the only thing they could really afford to send to Moreland was this lady. I don't know. I think you commented on on the yeah. Um, she she looks like a the, clear yeah. leftist uh, spy. I mean, she looked like a leftist. She had a camera phone yeah. out, you know, uh, you know, intentionally filming, you know, everybody. Like, uh, and I always laugh at you know, yeah. like she she thinks that you know she's you know exposing you know <laughs> what's going on, but you know, like. You don't care, like, you know, I don't what are you, care. What are they exposing? What are they exposing? Our faces are showing. And we're standing there proudly with our legs in our hands. There's nothing to expose. Like, about the only thing that could expose on me is having no clothes on. And no one wants to see that. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, like I mentioned before, you know, the, the flyers were taken by, you know, 70, um, you know, 5% of people who yeah, went in. It, it would have been interesting to, uh, to see, you know, uh, what, what happened when they went in. Like, was there a, you know, Moreland City Council person, you know, took the flyers off them, um, you know, saying, oh, you know, those, you know, people outside mm. are, you know, evil, you know, racists. Yeah, well, it would have been political suicide if they started doing that because then they're going for oppression of belief. And all I really wanted to do was to go there and see Kim Jong-un because I heard he was inside making all the laws that they had recently made up. Joking, but I wouldn't be surprised. Um, no, so I was kind of expecting a bit of resistance from the council itself. About the only resistance we encountered was a police line at the front telling us we can't go in to a public ceremony. This is a public event. No one's checking, no one is checking invites. I mean, if I rocked up at a completely different time with no flags, just me, I would be let in. I guarantee that. And I will, I'll do that challenge at the next, um, at the next citizenship ceremony to see if I get let in, proving that it's not actually invite only. 
Because if it's invite only, I wouldn't be letting because I'm not on the list. But it's clearly not invite only because they're just discriminating against us for carrying the flags of the land that their building is on. So after visiting uh, Moreland City Council uh, in the morning, both uh, uh, me and Tom from the Unshackled and uh, you and the rest of Patriot Blue travelled to uh, Melbourne to observe the Invasion Day rally. Now, uh, we uh, actually covered the uh, official Australia Day parade, which was uh, quite interesting because it seemed to be a celebration of, you know, all the different... Uh, ethnic and uh, nationality groups in Australia. So there was like the the Ind- Indian club, there was the uh, Samoan club, and then we also saw uh, Miss, Miss Transsexual Australia and uh, you know, uh, Daniel... <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. And, and, and we also saw, you know, Daniel Andrews, uh, you know, march in the parade, his, you know, mediocre uh, defense of the day. Uh, but there was also the, you know, the Invasion Day rally. It started uh, at uh, Victoria's uh, Parliament House. Now, it was organized by this mm. uh, group, the Warriors of Aboriginal Resistance. And the, the main organizer <laughs> for them was this uh, lady called Tanine uh, Onus Williams. And uh, she has, you know, copped a yeah. lot of. Uh, you know, intense scrutiny for her comments. Uh, fuck Australia, I hope it burns to the fucking ground. Oh, she's an idiot. <laughs> and uh, when they... Because after their speeches are concluded at uh, Parliament House, they, it followed the, the Invasion Day rally, it followed the official uh, Australia Day uh, parade route and concluded at uh, the corner of Federation Square and Flinders Street. And uh, Onus Williams, she actually, mm. uh, you know, during that march through the parade route, she you know, thought it was okay to, you know, abuse uh, people who'd been watching the parade, you know, holding Australian flags, you know, like elderly, you know, young children... Yeah. Which you know is just disgusting. Yeah, no, she's um, she's obviously got a few screws loose at the top, but for her to to yell out such treasonous things about our country, the country that probably pays her settling benefits if she doesn't have a job, or when she was unemployed did, or the country that um, has given her all she has has given her that platform to say such terrible crap, for her to say that about that country, she should be put on a terrorist watch list. Because if someone starts burning down houses of parliament and other things in her name, she should be held accountable for that. If if her group decides that they want to start riots and start all that kind of stuff, she should be held accountable for that because she planted the seed with what she said. And I've often thought this, you know, If she wants to burn down Australia, let's burn down Maccas because clearly that place means a lot to her because she probably spends most of her time there. Yeah, I thought it was uh, ironic uh, uh, when uh, a lot of the the people who were uh, watching the, you know, Invasion Day speeches, I observed them, you know, drinking 7-Eleven Slurpees, which is, you know, the... The, the prime symbol of, you know, uh, white Western capitalism and, like, nothing says, like, you know, wanting yeah. to, you know, destroy everything about, you know, a white settlement than enjoying a Slurpee. Yeah, well, I think... Mean, see, because the, the thing is that laws only apply to other people. You know, they... There's so one set of laws for them and another set for everyone else. It is what fascism is. Do you have your ruling group of people that have their own laws and everyone else that has their own laws. And these people up here are deciding what laws are being made. They're crying out fascism while being fascists. That is, like, the pinnacle of fascism is to take away free speech, which is what they try and do. Take away um, everything, like, humour, They tried to do that with Milo Yiannopoulos when he was here. Try to take away other people's voices and that kind of thing. And now they're coming for the celebrations. They're coming for Australia Day. They're going to be going for Easter. They're going to be going for Christmas until there is nothing left. And we are not a nation anymore. That's what they're going for. Now, Onus Williams and the Warriors of Aboriginal Resistance, they didn't handle their uh, intense scrutiny very well. And... uh, 
uh, the warriors of Aboriginal resistance, they actually doubled down on our comments with, you know, disgraceful uh, Facebook post yesterday, which was basically, fuck, you know, everything about Australia. And it's, it, it's, it's interesting. You, we've seen, you know, obviously the demands uh, throughout this, you know, uh, assault on Australia Day progress. It's now gone from change the date to abolish the date. And now uh, warriors of Aboriginal resistance have said abolish Australia altogether. They want it completely destroyed, which is basically, you know, that that's basically an incitement to terrorism, treasonous behaviour. That That is, that is, I, what, you know, I'm going to, I want to put a petition out there. I want to actually petition the government to register them as a listed terrorist organisation. If you're going to make threats to the country you live in for political purposes or for any purposes, it's terrorism. It doesn't matter how you look at it. It doesn't matter if they feel oppressed or not. It's terrorism. I'm pretty sure ISIS and Al-Qaeda feel oppressed, you know, in their own little way. But they are terrorists. And there's no reason, I see no reason whatsoever, that this war group should not be considered terrorists as well. And, of course, uh, this uh, Onus William, she is also part of the Curry Youth Council, uh, which uh, receives uh, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars from the oh Victorian God. state go uh, government. And, you know, they actually promoted yeah. the, you know, Invasion Day rally. They've started to, you know, somewhat, uh, you know, distance themselves from her now. And uh, the state government has. But, you know, they, they, they still are, you know, broadly, you know, sympathetic with the invasion day movement like i heard the um, you know aboriginal affairs minister for victoria today say that uh you know that oh obviously you know like we you know we've you know feels you know sympathy with the you know uh, people who attended the invasion day rally or oh, we don't like what she said but oh you know her role with the Curie youth council like it's a matter for them because they're an independent body but it's our money like you're giving taxpayers money to a group that wants to destroy every single government in Australia. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. You know, she if she is in a youth council, she is influencing the new generation, and I think that's a really bad idea. I mean, this is a new generation of jihadis with a different idea, going f doing terrorism in a different way. Uh, for a p different political motive, but still wanting to achieve the end result, which is the destruction of Western countries. And for, for, no, for everyone to be focusing their cameras on a barbecue happening in St Kilda, as opposed to this woman carrying on about burning down Australia, obviously mainstream media has their priorities very, very, very wrong, and they have them in the wrong order. And I feel that, you know, this, you know, uh, what Onus Williams said, this was the end result of, you know, the, the mainstream media and the left-wing parties enabling the, you know, anti-Australia Day uh, crowd. I mean, you know, they... Uh, despite the fact that Australia Day is supported by 70% of Australians, they, they made it out to be like, mm. this was an issue where there was, you know, the... Uh, it was, you know, equal on both sides. And so they had all, you know, these Australia Day debates, you know, on, you know, the various, uh, you know, uh, TV channels and, you know, made, made it out to be, oh, the community's really, you know, divided by it and encouraged, you know, pe uh, people like, you know, Warriors of Aboriginal Resistance to, you know, keep pushing the envelope. And, of course, th this is the end result. I mean, you know, thank you for, you know, unleashing this, you know, vile, you know, language and, you know, uh, anti-Australia rhetoric on us. Mm, yeah. The, um, that group just, it's, it's hard to explain because I, I haven't really researched much about them, from, but from what I heard, they are Australia's version of Al-Qaeda. Um, the majority of Australians, yeah, they're, they're on this, our side. They want to see Australia, the, the date kept on this date. But we've got to realise is it's the very, very loud minority that makes the, uh, the and the media backing them up that makes them look like the majority and that's just simply not the case because you go out into the outback and you go out to some of the aboriginal communities out there their first priority is not going to be the date 
that Australia Day lands on. Their first priority is going to be, I want better health care. I want better education. I want better food. I want better water. I want, you know, all the basics to survive. A date is not needed for survival. You know, it's, they don't need to complain about that because that, that's, that's not the biggest, biggest worry in the Aboriginal community right now. I mean, come on. Like, when I, go, when I went to go to the fridge and I want to eat, I'm not going to first go out and protest about Australia Day. I'm going to go to the fridge and eat because that's my priority right now. And I think that these groups should stop thinking that they speak for the entire Aboriginal community by saying that that is their main priority when it is not and it should not be. Yeah, and it was interesting when uh, the Greens launched their campaign to you know, change the day of Australia. They claimed to speak on behalf of like all Aboriginal people, and then you know in their uh, following days there was you know a whole ton of like <laughs> Aboriginal uh, leaders who said you know no, it's like we're not interested in changing the day at all. You know we're more concerned about you know these you know other issues that are happening in Aboriginal communities like you know domestic yeah. violence, child abuse, uh, you know uh, poor health and education outcomes. Comes. Look, because I'm sure if you went out to the Aboriginal communities and you offered them two ultimatums, you are you can have all the food and basic necessities to survive here for free, or we can change the date. Now, which one do you think they're going to lean more heavily towards? I don't think they're going to give up food and all that kind of stuff to change the date. Their priority is to survive. And having, as I said before, having Australia Day on the 26th of January is not detrimental to their survival. We should be putting first the bare necessities. We should be putting first the priorities, which is Medicare, like which is medical health for them, which is education for, you know, all the, all the necessities you need to survive. A date on the calendar is not detrimental. Now, our final stop on Australia Day was uh, visiting the True Blue Crew uh, beach party, which was down at Moran Reserve uh, at St Kilda. Now, uh, because it was basically just, you know, a celebration of... Uh, of you know Australian values and you know there was you know it was pretty you know uneventful in terms of you know the the confrontation the the media was expecting it only got about you know three or four uh, seconds on the news there was you know some criticism that <laughs> oh you know yeah. there's less than a hundred people who showed up but it was one of you know tens of thousands of uh, Australia Day barbecues on the day I mean you know th- uh, most people, you know, had, you know, their, their barbecues, you know, with their uh, Australian flags. I mean, uh, you know, that, uh, that is the real story. Mm. Yeah. Well, you know, you know that the media is politically driven when they don't want to report on gang crime. They don't want to report on drugs. They don't want to report on murders, rapes, and all these other terrible, heinous crimes happening around us. You know the media is political when they want to report on a barbecue on a beach. It's a barbecue. And, you know, it got so much coverage from the media because everyone was talking about it. They're going, um, well, the far right, the far right is going to be having a barbecue um, down at the beach. What do you have to say about that? Oh, my God, I think it's terrible. I mean, Seriously. It got so much coverage in the media, it was hilarious. Yeah, and uh, Kane Miller, who is head of the True Blue Crew, uh, in his concluding remarks, you know, made the point, you know, far right, for, you know, a gathering of far right people, I didn't see any swastikas. Oh, no, exactly, yeah, yeah, that was, um, the, the, yeah, the TBC guy, he said that. Um, <laughs> and, I mean, I have to agree with him, I didn't see one National Socialist anywhere. I would have been killed. I mean, come on, I am, I have uh, Asperger's, I am partly Jewish, and I'm partly Aboriginal, and I'm pretty sure if Hitler saw me, I would have been sent to the gas chamber straight away, so I don't exactly know if we are far right, how I survived, I must be bare fucking grills, excuse my language, I must be bare grills, if I did survive, but what can I say? You know, because obviously not far right. And besides, 
National socialism. Socialism has always been left wing. So I think I can leave that one with the with the left to try and explain Hitler. Yeah. And, and I felt you know quite uh, quite safe there. I mean you know I've been uh, covered you know plenty of these you know uh, patriot events and you know I've always felt comfortable you know with these people. You know where the trouble you know yeah. does. Uh, occur is when you know groups like Antifa or or the the official group here in Melbourne is the Campaign Against Racism and Fascism. Now they were uh, a no show oh. uh, at the event. Now I, I believe oh. that the, the the reason that they they didn't show is because Moran Reserve is actually you know further south of the main part of St Kilda, which is out of the reach of you know public transport, which I don't think the left can uh, get anywhere. <laughs> and so it was probably a bit That's further out of their saying. reach. <laughs> That's what I've been saying the whole, well, the whole day I was there. <laughs> I was going, I don't think the left are going to show up because they, Centrelink hasn't paid them enough to put in their mikeys to get here. <laughs> That's what I was saying the whole day. But, um, yeah, this campaign against racism and fascism, it's a, it's, a very, it's a very nice, very nice name kind of thing, you know. It's very, very beautiful. But the people in that are obviously a bit loopy. Um yeah, I've, they've actually blocked me from commenting on their post. It's actually kind of hilarious because, you know, once they can't win an argument with someone, they'll just block them. They showed up at the Milo event, probably because there's like two train stations and trams nearby, um, but they couldn't get to a reserve and couldn't walk partly down the street because obviously they were stuck with the fat acceptance people up the back going, oh, I can't catch up with you. It's like, all right, well, we don't have public transport, so... Let's just turn around and go back. So that's why I'm pretty sure they couldn't show up. Yeah, and I, I think that you know uh, this uh, beach party, given that it was you know, su- uh, such a success, is is was basically an overall you know symbol that you know Australia Day 2018. In the in the end, people just you know got on with it, and I hope that uh, yeah. that's the message that our politicians t- uh, take out of it. In fact. Um, you know, their, you know, Invasion Day protests in the city and, you know, the the barbecue, they were you know, so uneventful for the media. In fact, the, you know, leading story, like, on the news was uh, there was a alleged sex offender who got, you know, sh- shot dead in Sydney. I mean, that that was more newsworthy uh, uh, to, uh, to the media. And it, I, I hope that, you know, everyone reflects and say, you know, look, you're hyped up this day that, you know, it was going to be like, you know, the the biggest day of national division that had ever occurred, yet everyone just got on with it. They probably, they probably thought it was going to be like Canola, but in Melbourne. You know, uh, that's probably what the media was hoping for because you saw them they're all gathered, they're all just standing there with the cameras like, I'm going to get something today. And then by the end of it, they're like, what can I do? I'm bored. You know, like there's nothing I can possibly do. And it got to that point where they decided they interview me. Um, because I walked up and I stated that I'm indigenous and they, they, you should have seen how quick they picked their cameras up. They're just like, come on, all right, come on, let's have an interview. And so I decided to have an interview with them and I don't know when it's going to be on. I think it's on Sunday night or something that that program program Sunday night. Let's see how heavily edited they make my interview. But, um, yeah, they were, they were probably expecting some big hysteria, you know, some, a whole bunch of Antifa getting off the tram, looking like the dickheads revolution coming down the street all the way to Moran Reserve. But instead, that they, they yeah, as you said before, they couldn't make it there because public transport doesn't reach that far. <laughs> but at the left-wing parties, you know, they still are hanging on to this, you know, change the date uh, cause. Uh, and it was interesting that uh, Anthony Albanese... Uh, one of the uh, shadow uh, labor front benches, he actually uh, wants a uh, referendum or plebiscite or postal survey, you know, some kind of vote uh, on Australia Day. And, uh, you know, my attitude to that is, you know, bring it on because it's uh, I, I, the, the left, uh, it's, I've commented on this before, they feel like emboldened by the fact that you know, Australia voted yes to same-sex marriage that uh, that Australians are going to agree mm. with the rest of their agenda. And it's like, no, you know, that that was, you know, a uh, people voted on, on that issue on its merits. Like, we, we saw the polls leading up to, you know, Australia Day, 70% support. And so, you know, if, I, I say, you know, if you want to vote on it, bring it on, you'll get smashed. Please do it. I encourage it. 
But like, I mean, um, what was it? There's, um, I don't know if it was, a, I think it was might be, it might have been a news website had actually done a poll themselves on whether they think Australia Day should be might have changed. been the ABC. Uh, yeah, that was yes, that's the it was the ABC. I voted in favour of no, <laughs> um, and the majority of people voted no for the change of Australia Day. And I am pretty sure the ABC um, would have been spewing by the end of it because they were probably going, well, this doesn't actually suit our narrative because they're probably expecting something completely different. It's like, well, we've got the entire population in our control now, so if we put this out here, it's a no-brainer. We'll win. No, that's not the case. It happened with Trump. People thought Trump was gonna was not going to win. Guess what? He won. It's the silent um, majority of people that are now finally starting to have their say and speak up, and the left cannot handle it. And, of course, uh, you know, in the polls, you know, Labor is consistently ahead of the, the coalition. And I think, you know, what would, mm. you know, really uh, rally public support around the coalition when it comes close to the next election is really wedge Labor on this issue, you know, of Australia Day, because, you know, they've, they've got basically, uh, you know, mediocre support for the day. Uh, you know, like their, their official position is, yeah. oh, you know, we uh, support Australia Day, oh, but, you know, we recognise that, you know, it's a day of, you know, pain and hurt for Indigenous Australians, and you've got, you know, various, you know, uh, backbenchers who say they want to change the day, and you know, the, the coalition, mm. I believe that they should really, you know, next election say, you know, if you if you, you know, believe in in Australian values and, you know, protecting our national identity, you can't, you know, elect this mob who, if elected, they'll want to, you know, get rid of, you know, Australia Day. They'll want to, you know, change the flag and all, all, all these other things. I mean, uh, that is... That, that is really what I think the right really needs to, to harness in the community, that, you know, stop these attacks, you know, on basically Australia. I mean, it, sh- it, should be, it, sh- it shouldn't be too yeah. difficult. I mean, you know, a political party in Australia should be pro-Australia. Exactly. Exactly. But, um, you know, thanks to good old Sam, um, it seems that they now have connections to China. But... Um, you'd think that for a political party that has the Southern Cross um, on their symbol, um, you'd think that they would be pro-Australian, standing up for Australia and Australian values. But obviously, they're sellouts. You know, I'm, to be honest, I'm going to say it right now, I'm sick of both major parties because they have systematically, both of them have wrecked Australia to the core. And I think it's time for... Um, someone else to show up and, and someone else to someone from the working class to at least help Australia out. And that is why you have all these patriots getting on board and going, we need to do something because the government's sitting back twiddling its thumbs. We have Daniel Andrews in um, as Premier of Victoria who's doing jack about the crime epidemic and instead is making it worse. Like, I'm surprised that he is not in apex himself. I, would be, I wouldn't be. I would be surprised if I found out he was. But um, we, both major parties have just absolutely done it in, in Australia now. They, uh, you've got to, when it comes to, you've got to vote for the lesser of the evils. And that would be, for me, the Liberals. But I'm thinking of going more independent voting um, when it comes to the next elections. <laughs> Now, as we mentioned at the beginning of the show, uh, uh, you were there on Australia Day as part of uh, Patriot Blue, which is the, the Patriot activist group founded by uh, Neil Erickson, and you were also uh, present at his uh, gate crashing of the Moreland City Council meetings and also that uh, infamous uh, confrontation with Sam Dastiari. So how did you uh, become <laughs> to uh, get involved with <laughs> uh, Patriot Blue? <laughs> Look, just want to say one thing real quickly about Sam. I hope he likes my dance moves. Um, if he wants me to dance with him at any event at all, I'll gladly show up. But one thing I won't do that he might be a bit upset about is um, stripping. So, sorry, Sam, to disappoint you. Um, when it comes to involvement in these uh, groups, I it actually happened because I saw Avi Yemeni's um, event on Facebook about making Victoria safe again. Went to that event, 
met someone there, probably not going to say his name on, on air, and then he basically introduced me to Neil. Um, and the first time I met Neil, um, I was going to, that was the first time we were going to the Moreland Council. So I thought it was actually pretty hilarious that I've just met this guy and I'm already running into a council meeting with flags. <laughs> but um, Antifa actually picked up on it really quickly by putting me on their website um, after the Sam Dostiari incident. Um, only after, because they're really slack, only after I actually asked them if I can be in their Hall of Fame and I actually did. Congratulations to me. But that's basically how I met up with Patriot Blue. Uh, and uh, uh, I also um, want to bring out now after the because uh, it was a huge news story the the Sam Destiari uh, you know video and there was an article written about yeah. you that you know your mum was uh, really upset and was going to get you to uh, write a letter of apology to uh, Sam. What was the uh, what was the reality of that? Oh, I'm such a naughty boy. God, I should be punished. Um, so yeah, I did actually write a message to Sam on Facebook and the only thing I regret is the way we approached it. You know, that that's the only thing I don't regret being there. And I said it, um, to the media and I wrote a letter to Sam and I said to them, I'm like, Sam, I don't agree with what you have to say, but I would have approached you in a different manner. Hopefully one day we can meet up and we'll have a discussion. I've had to have a debate. Didn't hear about the debate part. All I heard back was, it was unfortunate, but hope it never happens again. And that was it. I'm like, but what about the debate, Sam? Debate me, please. But that, yeah, so then the um, media got hold of my mother. And I'm just like, like thanks. You know, now, now Antifa thinks I'm some mama's boy living in my mum's basement, which is far from reality. I am engaged. And, um, I'm pretty sure that my other half wouldn't find it too cool if I was, you know, kind of stuck in my mum's basement. My own personal opinion on the the Sam Gestiari like co uh, confrontation is that you know I don't I don't think it was right to you know call him you know a monkey and like you know calling you know a terrorist like you know yes he he yeah. is you know somewhat of a, you know an apologist for you know uh, communities which do have you know sympathy with uh, Islamic extremism but yeah I do I do agree with yeah, that, you know sure. uh, uh, those comments him were him personally or... yeah uh, look. I I agree with what you're saying here, but it's part of the outrage culture. The As Milo says, the best way to fight outrage culture is to be outrageous. And now I, the, the media even asked me about this. They're like, do you condemn Neil for what he said or do you condemn the other people for what they said, calling him a terrorist, a monkey, blah, blah, blah. And I said... I can't really have my say on it because I don't know what Neil was thinking at the time. He said it. And I'm responsible for what I say, not what everyone else says. I apologize for my actions, not everyone else's actions. And that was basically where the media left it. And they actually put in one of my quotes because they were going on about my mum. And I said to, I said, because they're going, um, do you apologize to your mum for this as well? And I'm like, Look, I listened to my mum because um, I'm, I was brought up with a traditionalist background, unlike Antifa, who would probably kill their mothers if their mother was conservative. And they posted that comment in the newspaper. Antifa posted it on their website with my biography. And it's actually become, what, a quote that I actually keep in my mind all the time now. <coughs> but, yeah, I, I personally wouldn't have started calling Sam all those things, but... Each to their own, everyone can have their say. Everyone is entitled to their freedom of speech. Uh, certainly the, the China commentary was spot on because this was a month before the uh, the, uh, the revela uh, further revelations came about uh, Sam's uh, connection to uh, you know ch uh, Chinese interest, which of course has brought about uh, his downfall. And so was there, yeah. like, um, you know, a certain degree of you know like satisfaction that you know like Sam had you know tried to sort of you know play the play the victim, and then like uh, you know <laughs> a month later he's is out of his job. 
<laughs> yeah, look, I mean, if you're going to enter politics, expect someone to disagree with you. You've got to expect the worst when you're in politics. And you can't be a public figure, such as a politician or a celebrity or anyone like that, and then as soon as someone says, I don't like what you're doing, you go and cry, oh, they call me racist, they call me all these kind of things. It's like, you know, get over it. You've got other things to do. And if he didn't make such a big deal of it, he probably would still be in power now. But it did raise quite a few questions um, when it came to, um, like, his interest in China and that kind of thing. And he's out of a job now. Sorry, Sam. Sorry. I hope my dancing can actually fix your broken heart. <laughs> now, uh, Neil Erickson, he is not just a, a controversial public figure, he's also controversial uh, in the, the patriot movement because he does, uh, you know, aim to be, you know, prov provocative and, like, his, you know, confrontation with uh, leftists. Like, it's, it's designed to, you know, get... Uh, reaction out of them. Now, obviously, you followed him for uh, at a number of um, you know events. Uh, what's your sort of response to that criticism? Um, I would say that if you're going to, if the left wants to play ball with you, you better have a bat ready. That's what I have to say because the left are throwing things at you, and if you're not ready to give an equal response, you're going to get knocked out by their ball. Now, I would liken it to a country that has an air force, a navy, and a land force. And then you have a country that has only a land force and a navy. Now, you've got to, in order for you to have a chance at battle, you've got to fight them on all fronts. So imagine that some people had come over from the other country with bombers and started bombing your towns. What are you going to do when there's hundreds of planes over you and you don't have an air force and you can't fight back? I think that he's trying to meet them on their level to fight with their tactics against them, making them weaker. And I think a lot of people need to realize that because you have a lot of the traditional conservatives, which are, they're like, oh, we're, we're, we're all about speech, we're not about violence, we're not about all that kind of stuff. We're not about violence either. We never incite the violence. We get attacked. And I think everyone is sick of politeness now. I think everyone has, is, absolutely over, um, is absolutely over dialogue because it seems now that dialogue is not getting on anywhere. I'm happy to have dialogue with someone, but the moment they're going to start attacking me, dialogue's over. And I think that Neil just wants to hit the media in the face, hit the left in the face, and just keep throwing all these punches and shock everyone around him to thinking, what is going on? Why is the left falling? And that's that's basically um, what my response to that would be. And do you have an opinion on the, the toll uh, sideshow? Because it's it's not actually related to sort of any, like, sort of, you know, activism at all. It's... It's just he's been wearing uh, a toll shirt who was his former employer. I mean, do you have a view on, you know, because obviously that's become a big story on itself. Yeah, look, it's politically motivated. You can see it. I can smell, I can smell the politics from here when it comes to um, the whole toll incident. I, I have never seen a company try and take down a private citizen of the working class so much than Toll has tried. Like, I mean, there, there was someone in the comment section who actually got the Toll logo and added an R in it saying it's Troll. Right? And I wanted to get that logo and print it on a sign and hold that up at rallies, but I'd probably get in trouble with that too. And, you know, I'm, I'm absolutely sick of this corporation that is trying to take down a simple forklift driver. I mean, he's a forklift driver. Who who cares, you know? And he's um, going to protest in a toll shirt. Okay, whatever. And he basically, he got rid of the shirt. Okay, the shirt's gone. But apparently that wasn't good enough for the, um, for the, 
the the company and they've taken the court again over it. So yeah, I think it's it's, it's just really crappy that they would think to um, spend all their money to back a lawyer, a big team of lawyers and barristers and whatever against a forklift driver. <laughs> it sounds ridiculous. It's like a completely unbalanced scale. And do you plan to continue with um, Patriot activism, like stay involved with Patriot Blue? Um, well, yeah, you know. But I, at the moment, while I'm living under these conditions, because my family is very left, I'll say that, um, I am thinking more along the lines of journalism. I don't know, something, something I can still have my voice heard, right, but that won't piss off my family. <laughs> oh my God, I sound like I'm 12 years old wanting to be edgy. <laughs> but that's really not the case. I'm actually 21. <laughs> uh, well, maybe we might have you uh, back on the show uh, sometime. But thank you, Logan, for uh, oh, speaking uh, with, uh, with us today. And yeah, we'll keep in touch for sure. Awesome. No problem. Thank you very much for having me. All right, everybody, that's the show for today. Now, all our video reports from Australia Day are up on our YouTube channel, so make sure you check them out. I'd also like to, before we conclude, thank the Save Australia Day campaign launched by Mark Latham and headed by Alice Springs Councillor Jacinta Price. I really did think it made a difference in rallying the public around our National Day, and Jacinta did a fantastic job in her media appearances, stating that people like the Greens uh, did not speak for her and a lot of other Indigenous people. Australia Day also saw the results announced for our 2017 Unshackler Awards. Uh, make sure you check out the awards video made by Unshackled Senior Editor Damien Ferry. There were quite a few surprising results. Uh, covering Australia Day was, uh, was of course a big event, but uh, there are several other upcoming events we will be present at. There is Protect Victoria's Rally, calling on the state government to take stronger action on the state's African youth gang crime wave. It is on Sunday the 11th of February at 1pm on the steps of Victoria's Parliament. So if you're concerned about the issue, then make your way to Melbourne to show your support. Also, the Unshackled would be present at the Free Speech Rally hosted by the newly formed Australian Freedom of Speech Movement, which would which will be held at the uh, State Library of Victoria in Melbourne on February 24th at 1pm. It aims to take a stand against the stifling of free speech in Australia, both uh, in our laws and through political correctness, so I hope many of you can make it. And if there isn't enough happening, our friend Dave Palau from Church and State is holding his first major event, the Church and State Summit 2018, on the 23rd to 24th of February in Brisbane, which will feature many high-profile speakers, including Margaret Court and former Deputy Prime Minister John Anderson. Uh, though this event, I should note, we will unfortunately not be able to cover, but I'm sure Dave will release uh, much video content from it. Thanks once again for your company, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in to The Unshackled Waves. Please visit theunshackledwaves.net for all the ways to subscribe and follow the show. Don't forget to pick up your free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and keep checking out theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.